seat. Check, check, check one, check two. <laughs> I brought some Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea because it's one of my new favorite bourbons. I also like the story that it travels around the world before this perfection actually happens. Look at that perfect pour. If you have issues pouring beer, pour bourbon. That's good. That was a healthy pour. <laughs> now that I'm looking, I'm like. Hi, I'm Chris Liney, and today we're talking about one of the biggest questions in workforce development. Why some people progress in their careers, and while others get stuck in the same or similar job. We're talking about aligned transitions versus likely transitions. Think about a cashier. In addition to handling money, they also have the skills of customer service, selling techniques, merchandising, and point of sale. But when cashiers make a job change, the most likely transitions are to, well, you guessed it, another cashier role. The next most likely is retail sales salesperson. Such a job change results in a similar or only a slight increase in pay and minimal growth potential. What does it taste like? Wonderfulness. <laughs> <laughs> An aligned transition, on the other hand, takes those skills and deploys them in a different way or different environment. For example, a cashier can transfer those customer service and selling technique skills into a customer service representative job. And while some new skills may need to be developed, the medium salary for customer service reps is about $10,000 more a year. So how do we move a job seeker from settling for a likely transition to making an aligned transition. Here are three ways to achieve this goal. First, help job seekers understand their skills. Too often, we think what makes us marketable is our past job titles or educational accomplishments. However, it's not about our titles or education, but the skills developed during these experiences and others. Helping a job seeker understand how these previous experiences translates to specific skills being sought by employers is essential. Second, understand the skill gaps of your region by looking at skill clusters. Skill clusters allow us to take standard occupation codes and aggregate aggravate them <laughs> and aggregate them into career areas and sub areas. By doing this, we can see the unique makeup of skill supply and demand in a local region and where those skills overlap in certain roles, even across industries. Third, lastly, <laughs> Third, match the job seeker who has identified their unique skills to employers seeking those skills. This is easier said than done, but through job postings and a better data-driven understanding of what skills employers are requesting and working with job seekers to help them to identify their skills, point number one, a matching process can now take place. By the way, MZ Burning Glass has a tool for this. I winked. You just... <laughs> <laughs> Skills are always evolving, and this requires us to evolve with them. Helping people understand how the demand for skills are changing and how their unique experiences translates to skills will help employers find the employees they need and job seekers progress in their career. For more information on this, check out our resource guide from Likely to Align here. I don't know, it's gonna be somewhere. Here's to building a skills-based economy. Cheers, and thanks for watching Beer, bourbon with MZ Burning Glass.